Recently, I had the doubtful honor of attending one of John Lennox's lectures. When I say lecture, I mean 55 minutes of religious motivation, popular quotations and appeals to the ceiling. So it's no surprise that I didn't convert to Shiva. But one thing struck me as weird, and that was the roasted chicken argument. I have actually written an essay about the roasted chicken argument and published it on my website, which you can find here. The roasted chicken argument addresses the claim that science can, at least in principle, explain everything. This is actually quite an interesting question, because it might be that there are things we cannot explain. Not things that we cannot explain now, but things that are ultimately impossible to explain. It might be that the universe can only be understood if watched from the outside and since we are inside of the universe, we cannot do that. It's a bit like a cosmic incompleteness theorem, you know Kurt Gödel's proof that if you have a sufficiently complicated uh, formal framework, there are some assumptions you just cannot prove. But this is not the way how religious apologists like John Lennox address this argument. He tells the story of a fancy Oxford dinner where he came to sit next to an atheist biologist. The biologist was of the opinion that science can explain everything. John obviously disagrees because if there are no gaps left, where would he put his god? So John asked the scientist whether he could tell him what the main cause was. And the biologist replied, roasted chicken. And then John Lennox probably very gleefully said, well, can you explain from the ink and the paper all the feelings, all the emotions, all the expectations of taste, all the childhood memories you get? And of course you can't. And John Lennox claims victory because you need an intelligence to derive all that. And of course you need an intelligence then to derive the complexity of DNA because the DNA is just a very long word consisting of four letters. But you could just think of a computer code. You could tell the computer if roasted chicken then do something. You could even plug in a camera to the computer and tell the computer if the video the camera films resembles roasted chicken it should do something. The human brain is just a very, very complex computer and it, what this, what a, such a simple program does, that's what the human brain does in a far more elaborate, but still similar way. And neuroscientists can tell you which areas of the brain are responsible for recognizing um, writing um, and for the expectation of taste. So that's not a mystery. You had to at one point be sort of programmed in school to understand uh, our alphabet and to understand the context of certain words and understand the, the words themselves. Somebody told you all that. And now you're using these memories to derive the taste from reading roasted chicken. There is no mystery, and you don't need a soul for that. With regard to DNA, DNA is a molecule. It's a very complex molecule. But for every molecule, you can write down a Hamiltonian. That's part of an equation, it's an operator, it's called. And it includes all the interactions between the nuclei and the, uh, and the electrons. The nuclei have electric charge and repel each other. The electrons have electric charge, negative electric charge and repel each other but the electrons are drawn to the nuclei and they will form chemical bonds. And you can calculate those chemical bonds with uh, this Hamiltonian. Um, it's called solving, it's called the Schrödinger equation, if you formally write that down. And you could use a computer, because the human brain is very bad at solving Schrödinger equations to um, get an answer. And you get the energies and the positions of the electrons and the nuclei, well, you get a probability for the positions, but you get the structure of that molecule and you get the chemical properties of that molecule. Actually, the 2013 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was given to three theoretical chemists 
who have done just that. They have approximated uh, the Schrodinger equation, I think, for amino acids. So this is not this is quite new science, quite fascinating science. Um, but it's not a mystery. And you don't need a god of the gaps to explain DNA. It, you certainly don't need a god of the gaps to explain DNA. You should embrace reality. You don't need to fear it. And that's the point I want to end on. Check out my website. It's here again. Uh, the essay is on there. Um, it's a bit longer than the video, of course. And uh, thank you for watching.